Canadian Olympic team. Smith will be with Australia, pardon me. Cards on a terrific three-point shooter in her own right. The only person shooting better from the three by percentage than her teammate, Kayla McBride. Clark takes it right to Courtney Williams. We can expect to see different people try to defend her. Absolutely, but she's really improved in the last month in terms of creating for herself off the dribble. And not just a three-point shooter by any means. And Clark second in the league in assists to Alyssa Thomas. Courtney Williams rescues and then shoots it over Boston. Mid-range master is Courtney Williams again. Just like we just saw Caitlin Clark do, able to create her own shot off the dribble, but it's the second chance opportunity that gives her that great look. Her first year in Minnesota was with Chicago last year, and that's a Boston moving screen for a personal foul. At least. I love what uh, Cheryl Reeves says. She said, Courtney Williams is a high-level talker. <laughs> On the court, off the court. <laughs> The good talking, the bad talking, all of that. But she really is very impressed with the chemistry on this Lynx team. That's nice. That shows the teamwork. And you can see it throughout this game. There are a ton of plays like that. You'll see them slip those screens. You'll see them backdoor cut. They trust one another. Atlanta Smith with that finish. Here's Kelsey Mitchell and another steal as Smith got in front of the pass and she's going coast to coast. Clark found her. I just think Atlanta Smith is, is so underrated in this league in terms of her versatility as Caitlin Clark takes one for the team, doesn't give up a layup on that possession. Part of the reason she's able to get free, now Alyssa Smith is a tremendous athlete, terrific at scoring in the paint. That's something that the Fever have done really well in the month of July. But Atlanta Smith doesn't allow her to make that contact. And so with her length and her foot speed able to create a steal, you mentioned how great this link squad is defensively and in the steal category. And I 100% agree with you about Alana Smith. Kind of scuffled her first couple of years, didn't get a lot of playing time in Phoenix. Minnesota, her fourth team in four years, had a great year last year in Chicago and a better year this year in Minnesota. I actually went back and looked. There's a backdoor cut. So interesting also, too, to that note, as Caitlin Clark tells her teammate, Leah Boston, settle down just a bit. It was a good idea. Aaliyah Boston is sort of the quarterback after Caitlin draws two on screens. K-Mac, just a little bit too strong. And Mitchell heads up court with it. <laughs> How about that to get by Cartman and then Aaliyah Boston with the putback. It's a terrific move by Kelsey Mitchell and Aaliyah Boston quick to the offensive glass. That's one of her strengths. Fourth in the league in offensive rebounding for Boston, who was the rookie of the year last year in this league. Williams gets it inside. Smith was able to save momentarily. That was actually a really good idea. Tough in terms of the execution. Atlanta Smith still on the move. But I like the, the looking for your teammates at a high level. And you see the height advantage, Samuelson over Williams, but then she saw Boston inside. Elias three for three from the floor. Excellent execution early on in this one by the Fever. Now Smith with the three. This will look effortless. She is off to a blazing start with nine points. She's been trying to get off of a little bit of a skid. She's been able to do that in this start. And then thought she had a block, but instead a whistle. So the, the Fever have really grown as a unit in terms of their pace, their tempo. Aaliyah Boston waits for this screen by Caitlin Clark and then slips with that high hand so that she's a big, easy target right next to the basket. These are the signs of this team really maturing. And when you look at points in the paint in the month of July, they're actually leading the league in that category with 45 and a half points in the paint. And now look, Melissa Smith at the line after the Atlanta Smith foul. Melissa only about 58% from the free throw line, but got the first one. Interesting crowd here, right? You got the Caitlin Clark yeah. crowd. The Lynx fans are screaming too. I was just about They're to say, not going to get out. It's shouted. competitive. It feels like a good balance. <laughs> but it is packed. Every seat. One point ball game. Williams elevates. And Courtney Williams is capable of being your microwave type of score yeah. if she sees that ball going in. Caitlin, long range. 
And here comes Courtney Williams. 5'8", but plays taller because she's got such great elevation on her shot. Beautiful! What a bounce pass into Alana Smith, who gets another chance. Man, we might have to ask our producers to clip off this one. We might have some on the line this season. We take a look at the upcoming WNBA national TV schedule. Doubleheader Tuesday on Amazon Prime, Connecticut, New York, Chicago, Vegas, and ESPN All-Star Friday night, 9 Eastern time. And Saturday, the game, the AT&T WNBA All-Star game, 8.30 Eastern on a Saturday on ABC. It's going to be fun. you got the USA Olympic team coached by Cheryl Reeve and the WNBA All-Star. What a tremendous display of women's basketball. It's all going to be in Phoenix, Boston's first miss. Caitlin Clark going to be on that all-star team. Boy, Carlton just couldn't finish. Unlike Bridget Carlton, who's pretty efficient in the way that she approaches the game. Just a little bit ahead of herself on that one. Carlton, her sixth year out of Iowa State, going back to her second Olympic Games for Canada as Erica Wheeler checks in some instant energy for the fever and Christy Sides has a conversation with Clark. Smith guarded by Smith. Now Samuelson nails it. That's a great shot and again patient execution pace in the half court by the Fever. Credit Alyssa Smith for all of the energy in terms of working in the paint. Samuelson coming back after giving birth to her daughter almost a year ago, August 4th. She was born last year. Kamak got it knocked away by Samuelson. And now Mitchell got hit by Williams. It's an opportunity for them to respond and get back to the identity that Christine just talked about. Yeah, Coach Reeve talked about that first and foremost is what she wanted to see improve today. They also only shot 31% from the floor, their lowest in 13 years in that loss to Seattle. There's a lot wonky in that game, although credit Seattle Storm, Neka yep. Gunpei led the way. Skyler Diggins Smith had a terrific game. Carlton. Williams is slow getting up, but appears to be okay for Minnesota, but right now it's five on four for Indiana. Mitchell, no, and then Smith and Williams have a little lap, a little friendly fire. Yeah, the pace those last three possessions or so, a little bit frenetic. Bounce pass, and Smith met Aaliyah Boston. Ball stays with Minnesota, and Tisha Heideman coming in, along with Xander Lucini. Both of these young women, Xander Lucini has been described as an X Factor. I had to talk with Coach Reeve a little bit about that. And of course, Natisha Heideman, a terrific defender, trying to find her way offensively still this year, but definitely brings energy on that side of the ball, which is key to the identity of the squad. Yeah, absolutely. Numbers down offensively, but contributes on the other end of the floor. That was a tricky bounce pass that didn't quite connect. And Caitlin Clark back on the floor for Indiana, Caitlin has a couple of points, has yet to get an assist or a rebound in her streak of double-doubles, which is now five straight. She also had a triple-double. Another turnover. Five turnovers, Carton Ooh. too strong off the glass. Heidemann taking it right to Clark. Threw it up left-handed. There's Caitlin's first board of the game. Second time on the right side of the floor, Carlton's just been a little strong on a layup. Heidemann got a hand on it. Boy, Indiana's lucky to score on that possession. You see all of the deflections and the energy that the Lynx play with, just unable to capitalize. And Aaliyah Boston, steady, right at the rim, put back. Boston four or five from the floor. Indiana on top. McBride wanted it. Just rimmed out, but Carton gets the offensive rebound. Smith. Maneuvered 
Definitely. That was tough. The backspin on the basketball, no glass. I thought she was going to go for glass there. That stops a 7 nothing fever run. And then Smith called for the foul on Boston. This, well, that was very an Olympic year. That's what has been happening in the W. Half loaded up with talent. Can't wait to watch the games in Paris. Clark guarded now by Xander Lucini. Some good length on the perimeter on Kalen. That is a tough pass. Wow. And somehow she got it in. Man, the pass and the cut. And these are the type of things that this team in particular has to continue to play together. There's no way they could have pulled that off in game one of the season. And we've all had the chance to see them grow and learn one another. And now Xander Lucini hits oh, one oh, over oh, Clark. Oh. Who's called for the foul. You know, Pee Wee's, if you talked about the fan bases dueling in here, we got this one a four point play. Xander Lucini in her third year in the league, but has been out the last five years. Lynx fans certainly remember her when she signed as an undrafted free agent back in 2017 and has perfected her craft overseas and now is back in the league. She's been terrific for this Lynx squad. She can score in the paint, she can handle the ball, obviously can knock down a three. Austin looking for Samuelson and then gets it over to Hull. Wheeler. Shot clock dying, they just get the shot off. Hull misses and Carlton comes up with it. And Lucini. <laughs> with all sorts of moves. Saw the defense there by Hull to hold her ground and make that shot as difficult as possible. And now Indiana gonna try to get the last shot of the quarter. With the shot clock off. Hull will inbound to Clark. Boston Wheeler and Samuelson also out there for Indy. Clark being hounded by Kayla McBride. Step back three at the buzzer. Outside, because they are just going to go swarm on that inside. Uh, all right, Coach, thank you very much. We'll let you go. And uh, right away we saw McBride get the first bucket. And Kayla McBride did not score in that first quarter. Only three members of the Lynx, Alana Smith, Courtney Williams, and Xander Lucini. Cecilia, they were the only three that scored. You saw, though, McBride, as much as the three-point shooting is the highlight when it comes to her performance this season, that was an example of her strength and ability to score in the mid-range. Lexi Hull just picked up the foul for Indiana. Caitlin step back. Also misses Pam Ward, Monica McNutt, and Christine Williamson joining you from a sold-out target center. Xander Lucini got it. Three point shooting as much a part of this Lynx identity this year as is that defense. They are second. Only New York hits more threes on average per game than Minnesota. And yeah, boy, Clark is just getting pounded by different defenders. Mitchell, no. One handed rebound by Smith who was fouled. Dorka Yuha is attempting to block out there, but Melissa Smith established position and used that athleticism to draw the foul. It's two fouls now on Yuhas. And boy, Smith and Boston, what a formidable post pair for Indiana. Mitchell, a little bit of space. Ooh, it is a battle in the paint today. And Melissa Smith's turn to hit the deck. Heidemann shovels it back to Williams. In and out. Dorka follow. Coach Reeves, her four and five, and Dorka Yuhas and Alana Smith. And of course, you get throw Nafisa Collier in there when she's healthy. They've just got such terrific hands and touch around the rim. They are so effective in that triangle under the basket. Minnesota outscoring Indiana 7-0 so far in this quarter. And Dantas ends that. Demiris Dantas, who got a nice Round of applause, good recognition that, yeah, here. That, that was, was classy, really nice, right? Very classy. That play, though, has served the Fever really well. We saw Aaliyah Boston score in that same execution. 
Williams thought she got fouled, no call. And then Mark just lost the ball. She saw Lexi Hall slicing to the other side. I don't know if there was contact on it. We couldn't see from our angle. But I saw the idea. The execution just comes up a little short. Carlton just needs that much room. <laughs> The three-point contest, oh, Carlton will be preparing for playing with Team Canada for the Olympics. That's right, Canada getting back to the Olympics as Melissa Smith is able to hit inside. Both teams even in terms of second chance opportunities at six so far in this basket. Second chance points, excuse me. Carlton again. Oh, this one. I think Smith got her fingertips on that one. And now Smith running the floor. Carlton was able to get a hand on it, and they say it's off Smith. So good hustle by Bridget Carlton. It's Minnesota basketball. One of the things that was interesting as we prepared for this game is the mindset, and let's take a look at this replay, though. The hustle by Bridget Carlton misses the shot, but disruptive enough to earn her team an additional possession. Pace is going to be a key in the course of this game, and not just up and down pace, but also the pace and the cadence of the half-court execution. Is that ball popping? Are you getting into your actions quickly to shift the defense? Might have been up top, and then around the horn. Everybody touched it on this possession. Zangelosini halfway down, and then Atlanta Smith was fouled after she grabbed the rebound. <laughs> I love the way these Lynx fans Lived and died on that. It was online, though. Right from our angle, it was online. And as you saw, the ball danced and decided not to slide. Now on Melissa Smith. That is two on her. And that may be a coach's dream with the possession, right? Everybody touched the basketball for Minnesota. It's got that snap, crackle, and pop, Pee Weezy. <laughs> That's what you're calling for. <laughs> Shot clock is winding down. Atlanta. And then the over-the-back call on the rebound attempt. That's on Carlton. Deep into the shot clock are the links. I don't know that Smith knew what the shot clock was at when she caught that basketball. Tisha Heideman gets a nice hand as she subs out for Kayla McBride. She did a terrific job of pestering Caitlin Clark at that guard yep. spot defensively. As you mentioned, that's what the people recognize. It, not the scoring, it's what she's able to do on the defensive side of the floor, especially against Caitlin. And now K-Mac was on her. Xander Lassini draws that assignment, and the inside finish for Smith. Such a tremendously athletic move. All types of core strength on that one. It's Indiana back to within three. Williams elevates. This is everything. Time out here in Minneapolis where Courtney Williams and the Lynx just opened up a, a business down in uh, Florida. Yeah, so we all know that she wanted to go into mortuaries because she felt like people should look their best as this the last time that families will see them. And I saw her pregame. I said, Did you, have you brought the dream to life? She said in Miami she has in fact. So we'll have to get more details. Yep, it's a mortuary science. Did some internships and she was still playing here in Minnesota in that. And she is a uh, Miami native. Okay, Matt. <laughs> She's been particularly lethal off the catch and shoot so far this season. She had eight threes in a game last month. First quarter, her lowest scoring first all year. One of five. The Minnesota defense has been tenacious on her. And now she's going to be in the way. Clark takes and it right to Courtney Williams. We can expect to see different people try to defend her. Absolutely, but she's really improved 
in the last month in terms of creating for herself off the dribble. And not just a three-point shooter by any means. Clark second in the league in assists to Alyssa Thomas. The fever though, they're shooting two of eight. Courtney Williams rescues. And then shoots it on the Boston. Mid-range master is Courtney Williams again. Just like we just saw Caitlin Clark do, able to create her own shot off the dribble. But it's the second chance opportunity that gives her that great look. Her first year in Minnesota was with Chicago last year, and that's a Boston moving screen for a personal foul. I love what uh, Cheryl Reeves said. She said, Courtney Williams is a high-level talker. <laughs> On the court, off the court. <laughs> the good talking, the bad talking, all of that. But she really is very impressed with the chemistry on this Lynx team. That's nice. That shows the teamwork. And you can see it throughout this game. There are a ton of plays like that. You'll see them slip those screens. You'll see them backdoor cut. They trust one another. Just put that up with one hand, right? With that finish, here's Kelsey Mitchell. And another steal is... <laughs> Smith got in front of the pass, and she's going coast to coast. Clark found it. I just think Atlanta Smith is, is so underrated in this league in terms of her versatility. This is a Kevin Clark takes it for the team, doesn't give up a layup. Leah now with eight rebounds to go along with 11 points. McBride, quick trigger. Another offensive board for the Lynx. And this time McBride oh. couldn't get it to go off glass, but a couple of opportunities, and Juhas cashes in. Caitlin, hit it! Her first three of the game. And her team needed to see a three go down. Kelsey Mitchell knocked one in not too long ago, but good to see the point guard starting to get going. It's the second made basket for Clark today. And Miss or make trying to get up the floor and get quality looks. Goodness gracious. And the bride went down. And then acrobatically put it in off the backboard. We fall down, but we get up and yep. score. <laughs> Mitchell with another miss, boards it and puts it in. This is one of the things that Coach Cheryl Reeve wanted to be mindful of. Because the Fever are trying to push so quickly, you've got to be alert defensively. Miss or make, you can't leave folks wide open. Fever have done a good job finding the holes. Courtney Williams. Oh. Um, everybody thought she was going to shoot, including Juhas. It's shorts, too. Like a fit you saw, search which great game, plantar fasciitis. Gotten good looks that just haven't been able to connect. They've executed well. Now you do want... That's a three for Juhas. And she did shuffle her feet. Good job, Miss, without Collier. What's up, Ari? Welcome to the studio, girl. Caitlin Austin off the switch. That's a tough shot. And then in the corner for the three. Carving just under eight assists per game. A little bit of a slow start. Whoa. And meanwhile, Caitlin Clark has uh, not gotten things going. We are joined now by the head coach for Minnesota. We hope Cheryl Reeve is over there. You got this us, is, coach? This is a mad. Yeah, we're good. Okay, we're good. Thank you. Uh, good start here from hey, Minnesota. Yeah, let's Minnesota. stay on. Let's stay on. We made a shot. Maybe yeah, we'll make okay. more shots. We'll stay. I'll give you, this a whole half. Yeah, okay? you could be our second analyst. I would love that. I like it. Okay, uh, Caitlin Clark, you kept her in check pretty well in the first half. What did you think about your defense? Uh, our team defense has been good. That's what we do all season, right? And so we're going to compete and uh, make them earn it. All right, so just four threes knocked down, Coach. What have you thought of the looks that you guys have gotten? We like most of them. Okay. I think some of them are rushed. Uh, I think mechanically, just do a little better, locking on how we shoot the basketball. All right, Coach. Thank you so much for your Thank time. Thank you. All right, Cheryl Reed, the head coach of the Minnesota Lynx for WNBA Championships, the U.S. Olympic team head coach as well. This is the second and last game for both teams before the break. Alyssa Smith count it. That's great. A great move by Alyssa Smith. Just using her length, that high release point, even though Atlanta Smith probably would argue. Smith on Smith. <laughs> right there, Smith on Smith crying. And Atlanta called for the foul. Here is Melissa. Puts the free throw home. Yeah, Smith so good in that first half with 15 points. Now has three personal fouls, however, for Minnesota. First of three meetings between these two teams this season. Two of them will be here in Minneapolis. And that got away. Kelsey Mitchell did a good job of base. Sides, talk to us. She's like, I got a lot of scorers that haven't always hung their hat on that side of the ball. So as a team, they are continuing to grow in their defensive effort. A gamble defensively by Smith did not pay off. It paid off for Melissa Smith. Got 
five points already in this quarter. Carlton left alone and hits it. You could see Courtney Williams waiting for that to unfold. Waits for the screen action on that left side of the floor. And then here's Aaliyah Boston establishing great position. Just a little bit too much the first time around, but gets him an extra 14 seconds. Mitchell, good defense by McBride to force that turnover. Smith gives it up to Williams. Minnesota again without Nafisa Collier, their leading scorer and rebounder out with plantar fasciitis for the fourth straight game. Smith couldn't get it to go. The two players with that 20 and 10 mark in terms of 20 points and 10 rebounds, that is. These are team in steals. Caitlin, nope. Aaliyah right. Boston, You're right there. There is a little bit of a disconnect for Minnesota. They're, they're usually really good and helping in rotation. And Clark is just keeping her dribble alive and really probing this defense. Bride gets it out to Juhas, who puts it in. <laughs> the fever bench immediately hopped up and signaled travel. I just thought it was a little unorthodox footwork. Yeah. I don't know that I saw a travel. Juhas yeah. with six now. Danielson. The Clark who couldn't catch up with it. Points. McBride gets the Smith screen who asked for the ball back. She gets it and had her shot blocked. Carlton just hit a three and hits another one. When it rains, it pours for BC. Three of seven from deep. An elite three-point shooter broke Maya Moore's single-season percentage record here as a Minnesota Lynx player. And Kelsey Mitchell gets that rainbow to go from the corner, which is actually something that the Lynx do really well in terms of the opportunities they get out of corner shots. And Mitchell hit, missed four or five threes in the first half. We got that one to go, and we're all tied up again. Kicked by Melissa Smith, so we have 14 off since 2016 which was Tamika Ketching's final year. Well, a big part of it is last year, Aaliyah Boston had a double-double performance in three out of the four matchups. Mitchell and Smith played in all three games prior to this one, but it's so much about matchups, and she's obviously missed valuable time getting healthy. She played almost 23 minutes two days ago in their loss to Seattle. That was way off the mark by Mitchell. That's what we call a little bit of a heat check. Oh my goodness, what's happening? Yeah, Cheryl Reeve cannot believe that that ball is... Clark, as Indiana brought, or Minnesota brought the double on her. Samuelson with a little bit of daylight. Sandra Lucini boards it. And Minnesota pushes. Carlton driving on Boston. Now the shot clock in his single digits. McBride into the teeth of the defense, and it just rolled out. She has a she has really great touch at the rim when she does attack, though. Yeah, not just a three-point shooter, certainly. You know, she's really good at that. Aaliyah Boston here with the opportunity to kind of quarterback. Initially, she looked down to Melissa Smith on that high-low. Here's a double team by the Lynx. Kelsey Mitchell with the tough shot. Similar. So to yep. what we just saw from Kayla McBride, the scoop it did from June and July compared to how she started the season in May. Her field goal percentage went up almost 10 field goal percentage points. Oh, Courtney Williams, when she launched that, thought it was going in, and it sure did. Richard Carlton with five assists now to lead Minnesota. Caitlin rims out. Clark with seven points, four assists, and only one rebound. Us, right into a bunch of red jerseys. Vandalicini, one-handed floater. Austin continues to clean up on the boards. 13 rebounds to match her points today. Clark behind Ooh. the back. It excels anyway with the way that they shoot the three-point ball. And turnover for Clark as she continuing to learn and grow with her teammates and the chemistry that's required. Lorca, nice finish. K-Mac with the assist. 
the great screen, great roll, and finish by you guys. Minnesota on top now by two. Shot clock dying for Clark. A lot of number 22 jerseys here, and you can see the people almost standing up waiting for the shot to fall. And now they see the turnover. Clark behind the back, and then Xander Lucini grabbed her. And we've seen Kate, when we saw this at Iowa too. Yeah. You know, she could get emotional. It happens. It's a basketball play. Well, it's not a basketball play, but it is the emotions of playing basketball. She didn't mean to hit her in right. the face. But she did definitely flail her arm out in frustration. And that's just not going to work. Trying to lob it into Boston. Another turnover for Clark. She is six. Carlton! It's a beautiful jump shot. A beautiful jump shot. Courtney's side of the floor, including Kone trying to establish paint position and just sends that thing to her shooter. She's got four threes today, and hitting over 45% of her threes. I mean, I, I was just about to say that, PBZ. The percentage is sick. Oh. Grab the Clark miss. Caitlin, one of eight from three, make it one of nine. Dante saved it, but they need a shot. Wheeler! It was seven back in the first half. I'd like to see Indiana get back to some of the executions we saw early in the ballgame. Great pass. Ooh. Williams unselfish. And a rebound by Kone, who was in. Enrique, third leading scorer behind Asia. Heath, Dantas, calmly hits the three. Bridget, Clark, and this time. Wheeler, nope. Run all game, Mitchell with the shot clock expiring. Xander Lucini into Kone, and now Samuelson nails it. Xander Lucini, whoo, fouled. Here at the Target Center has been a fantastic environment for WNBA basket. Elevator coming over. And there were two seniors dying for Samuelson. Who bought it? Off glass. The quarter has been a demonstration of that. Yeah, she says they're good offense. Uh oh. Buckle Carlton's knees. <laughs> Shot clock single digits for Hall. Got it knocked away by Courtney Williams. Bench units, the three point shooting numbers are very similar. Off the inbounds. Here's McBride. Carlton with five threes today. That ties a career high. Gives it to Smith. Smith making her triumphant return back to the ball game. Dealing with those four fouls. Had not played for much of the start of the fourth quarter. Let's see if her presence helps to stabilize this link. And she had a terrific game, really, until she picked up that fourth foul. Minnesota bouncing back on top. Kelsey Mitchell also heating up in the second. The high arcing from Kelsey Mitchell. That three-point shooting from the month of June, or excuse me, May into June and July, up from 32 to 37. 10 of her 17 points coming in the second half. 37%, I mean, of course. I knew what you meant. Yeah. <laughs> Ball ping-pongs up into the air. K-Mac. This is the three. And K Mac uncharacteristic. Clark cut off by Smith. Samuelson, Caitlin, three ball. Chased down by Mitchell. Kelsey Mitchell attacks and hits. I just love how deliberate the Fever are in forcing the Lynx to have to close out and rotate. They're going to swing the ball till they find the best look, and then they're on the glass creating second chance opportunities. Indiana trying to go. To Smith, who was held by Hull. And you're right, we talked to Coach Reed before the game. She expected this kind of a game. A lot yeah. of respect for this Indiana squad. I think especially with the absence of Collier, right? Right, like, that's, she's that hurts. a monster engine for the Lynx. Xander Lucini! Man, I tell you what, the selflessness has given... Smith with three points in this half after putting up 15 in the first. Clark to Boston, who was challenged by Zandalasini and passed out. Rebound Carlton. 
Aaliyah uh, Boston's decision making on that short roll or the hard roll has it, just been really good. Oh boy, Smith was calling for it, but Carlton's pass had a little bit too much on it. None other than Lexi Hall involved though. Yeah, no surprise there. Yeah, right? just gritty as a defender. Timeout, just over three minutes to go in a tie ball game in the Twin Cities. Going to the basketball. The fever with the ball, Clark passed up the long three. Into Boston, give the assist to Clark with the Boston finish. We talked about it to open the basketball game over the last month, the connection between the two of them. Aaliyah Boston shooting 58% off of passes by Clark. Indiana back on top, Carlton. Looking for Williams now. Gets the screen from Alana Smith, still playing out there with the five personals. Xander Lassini can't get it to go. Xander, and Boston with the board, sorry. Xander Lassini had Kelsey Mitchell on the block. That was a better opportunity with her height advantage. Indiana with a chance to make this a two possession game. Clark. Samuelson inside, good ball movement. Really good. Hannah McBride's not done. She struggled from behind the three-point line tonight, just hitting just her second. But when the lights get brightest. One-point lead for Minnesota. And Clark got fouled. This is a torch. And Asia Wilson's just off the charts. Other ridiculous. worldly. MVP right now. Otherworldly. I don't even know who'd be second. Media day, she took those pictures with her storm fit. She is playing like a superhero. <laughs> and Minnesota down three after Clark hit the free throws. McBride to tie. Great job by Smith. Hanging in there with five fouls to get the rebound. McBride misses again. And now Clark's going to take the air out of the ball a little bit. Yeah, K Mac is two for 10 from three today. You're the best defensive team in the league. You play sound defense in a one possession ball game. Clark, as we go inside a minute. Shot clock, dying. Samuelson's not going to get the shot off. There's that deep. You shoot it with confidence, and everybody gets to the glass. Carlton with five threes, ties a career high. The Canadian also has seven rebounds and six assists. There she is. Set to go for Minnesota. Smith over to McBride, and she was fouled on her way to the basket. I, I'm not sure what the goal of that play was, but Xander Lucini had Caitlin Clark on the block, so that was an opportunity. I thought the Lynx would have looked to go inside. Third foul on Clark. McBride draws the double, and now Smith has to go. What a play, Kelsey Mitchell with the block, and then Austin saved it inside. Wow. Kelsey Mitchell, probably the smallest player on the floor, Kelsey Mitchell at the free throw line with the chance to possibly salt this away. That was the third block of the season for Kelsey Mitchell, and what a huge one. 80% from the free throw line. Is that it? And she delivers. A reset timeout taken by Minnesota. They advance the ball. Williams looking for somebody to throw it to. Almost a five-second call. Carlton missed the three. Caitlin Clark with the rebound. She's fouled. And center. And she's going to go away with another win. A big fourth quarter for Clark. The first 14 points scored in the fourth. She scored or assisted on all of those. But truly, Aaliyah Boston tonight or this afternoon, I should say, an impeccable performance helping to anchor this Fever team. And Kelsey Mitchell has 21 points. Oh, Boston the biggest play the game, in the block. Yeah, the block. The 17 huge. points and here by 16 rebounds for Boston. What a fourth quarter for the Fever as they outscored Minnesota.